हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू अफेयर्स क्लाउड माय नेम इज विकास सो फ्रेंड्स वी हैव एन एप्लीकेशन बाय द नेम कैरियर्स क्लाउड विच यू कैन गो एंड डाउनलोड थ्रू द प्ले स्टोर एंड वंस यू हैव डाउनलोडेड यू कैन लॉग इन विद योर जीमेल आईडी एंड व्हाई आई एम सजेस्टिंग यू दिस एप्लीकेशन बिकॉज दिस इज द वन स्टॉप सोल्यूशन फॉर ऑल द करंट अफेयर दिस इज द बेस्ट ऑफ द बेस्ट एप्लीकेशन एंड द प्लेटफॉर्म वेर यू कैन एनहेंस योर लर्निंग थ्रू हेल्प here you will be provided with multiple courses here you will be provided with multiple options of quizzes and even you here you will be provided current affairs on daily basis pdfs and quizzes will be provided to you on daily basis both in hindi as well as english here you will be provided current affairs with weekly basis and monthly basis also here remember once you have done watching our video then you can log in through this application take out the pdf read that pdf and go through the quizzes that will enhance your preparation same you have to do for weekly and same you have to do for the monthly also in monthly you will be provided with the top 100 important questions pdf and video also that will enhance your learning and it will be a very benefit and beneficial and important video for the revision perspective and not just this friends apart from this we also provide you banking and economic questions we provide you state current affairs such as of uttarakhand up tripura telangana and many more not just this apart from this we also provide you topic wise current affairs and the topics that we are providing you are really important these topics are such as national affairs international affairs important days sports defense science and technology apps and web portals obviously these are the important topics that are being asked in various exams across india so these are the topics that are must and should be covered and will be beneficial for the preparation of the students hello everyone so in this video we will be discussing important current affairs for 16th of december so stay tuned till the end first is which ministry launched indian forest and wood certification scheme so which is that ministry as the name suggests it is for forest and climate change so is your ministry of environment forest and climate change right they have recently launched this indian forest and wood certification scheme that is ifwcs indian forest and wood certification scheme and this the main aim of this scheme of this certification scheme was to encourage sustainable forest management is to encourage sustainable forest management in india correct so it was launched by ministry of environment forest and climate change this scheme has three main components here we can see forest management certification tree outside forest management certification and chain of custody certification this scheme is governed by indian forest and wood certification council and it is operated by indian forest indian institute of forest management that is in bhopal madhya pradesh correct so do take a note of this that is this scheme was launched by ministry of environment forest and climate change that is indian forest and wood certification scheme at risk and the main aim here is to encourage sustainable forest management and agroforestry in india next ifpri what is this ifpri international food policy research institute international food policy research institute they along with which organization recently signed a statement of intent statement of intent that is soi and it was to strengthen the policy frameworks for agriculture transformation which is that organization it is ifpri along with niti ayog they have recently signed a five year statement of intent and this was to strengthen and to make policy various frameworks that will contribute to the development of india and that too that will make various reforms in the agriculture transformation right then here you can see this niti ayog along with ifri they signed this five year long statement of intent and it is to strengthen the policy and program frameworks that will contribute to the development of india specifically in the agriculture sector this statement of intent will broaden the mandate of ifpri to support the agriculture vertical of the niti ayog here they will provide key analytics and support to the niti in mutually identified areas with the border realm of food system transformation initially focusing on agriculture rural development trade climate change policies in india and so on right so do take a note of it if we talk about niti ayog who is the chairman chairman is the current incumbent prime minister and as of now narendra modi ji is the 
प्राइम मिनिस्टर हु इज द चीफ एग्जीक्यूटिव ऑफिसर ऑफ नीति आयोग बी वी आर सुब्रमण्यम एंड वेन वॉज दिस नीति आयोग इस्टेब्लिश इट वॉज इन टू थाउजेंड फिफ्टीन एंड द हेड क्वार्टर इज इन न्यू डेली इफ वी टॉक अबाउट आई एफ पी आर आई हु इज द डायरेक्टर जनरल हेयर जोहन स्विनन हेड क्वार्टर इज इन वॉशिंगटन डी सी एंड इट वॉज इस्टेब्लिश इन नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट इज इंडिया वीमेन वोटर्स टू सरपास मेल वोटर्स बाई टू 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 थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी नाइन जनरल इलेक्शन एज पर द डाटा रिलीज बाई एस बी आई इज इकोनॉमिक रिसर्च डिपार्टमेंट इंपॉर्टेंट डाटा दैट द फीमेल वोटर्स इन इंडिया दे विल सरपास द मेल वोटर्स इन इंडिया बाय द ईयर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी नाइन दिस डाटा वॉज What is the name of that report? E R D Economic Research Development. Name of the report, or sorry, uh, it is the department that is Economic Research Department, and they have released a report that was titled Women Empowerment and Ladli Behana, December twenty twenty three. As I said, it stated that the women voters in India will surpass the male voters from twenty twenty nine general elections, and in twenty twenty nine the total voter turnout is expected to be around seventy three crore. of which women voters will be 37 crore which will be higher than the registered men voters at 36 crore right then if we talk about 2047 general elections voter turnout projection that is in the year 2047 when india will achieve 100 years of independence during that year women voter turnout should increase to 55% and men voter turnout might increase to just 45%. It is projected that the in in year 2047 around 115 crore would be registered as electors and by 2029 we saw that 73 person 73 crore individuals will be registered as voters. Right. Next. Next is a report on logistics cost in India assessment and long term framework this was released by which organization recently. It is DPIIT. right they come under the ministry of commerce and industry they have recently released a report that is logistics cost in india assessment and long term framework and it was released in new delhi this report was please uh, prepared by ncaer that is national council of applied economic research along with asian development bank with the experts and the task force members now what this report is about right logistics cost in india assessment and long term framework uh, logistic cost is when we have to transfer good from one location to another location it can be from factory to the warehouse or it can be from factory to the upfront stores and so on the cost associated with it is your logistics right so this report offers various or various reliable estimates regarding the efficient movement of goods and services that how can we make logistics more easy more eco friendly and more sustainable also because if the law cost of logistics increases that in turn leads to increase in the price of the final good that is the reason we say when the rise of petrol increases then all other things are expected to become more costly because once the petrol is increased the cost of logistics will increase and if the cost of logistics increases the end good or end product price will also increase correct so remember this report it was released by dpiit and it talks about that india's long term framework like how what are the ways that india should proceed ahead what are the things we should take care right the targets what should be the reduced cost of the logistics what are the improvement we are doing in the logistics sector say for example we have launched pm gati shakti what was this it was to multi model logistic model it was launched on this and it was to connect the big cities and we are now also seeing that in india during covid 19 nhai has also constructed multiple highways that are reducing the time between various two important cities next next is according to who the road traffic deaths globally declined by how much percent see in this data by who remember two things were mentioned about globally and about india in globally the who is saying that the road deaths that are associated with road accidents they have decreased right they have shown decrease in the number of deaths so option 5 is right that by 5% the number of deaths by road accidents have decreased but in india these deaths they are increasing right so we can say or the who stated that globally the deaths are decreased 
in the last 10 years framework that is from 2010 to 2021 but in india the number of deaths increased right mark this and this was the fifth edition of the report that was prepared by who if we talk about who who is the director general here dr tedros gibrasis headquarter is in geneva switzerland and it was established in 1948 next next is lic cards and idfc first and mastercard three organization lic cards idfc first and mastercard they collaborated to launch a co-branded credit card that is lic idfc first credit card this is a co-branded credit card that is to meet the dynamic and financial needs of india the card is available in two variants that is lic classic credit card and lic select credit card this card is free of cost that is zero joining fees and zero annual fees and it is specifically designed for the customers of tier 2 and tier 3 cities right so these three organizations came together and launched this credit card if we talk about idfc first bank managing director and chief executive officer who is he v vedyanathan headquarter mumbai maharashtra when was it established 2015 then lic card service limited where is the headquarter new delhi it was established in 2008 next next is cash free payments have launched india's first self hosted payment orchestration platform i repeat cash free payments they have introduced the india's first self hosted payment orchestration platform that is flowwise which allow payment management to take place directly on the merchants infrastructure here flowwise is one step uh, one setup solution for indian businesses for managing direct payment system this simplifies the complexity and effort of using the multiple payment gateways for businesses and the payment platform is considered to be secure as there is no scope for data leaks also the platform allows to send payments to different partners by cutting processing fees of up to 40 percent and improving the success rate by 10 percent right so coming back it is cash free payments they have launched india's first self-hosted payment orchestration platform and it was named flowwise right this will allow the payment management to take place directly on the merchants infrastructure next next is your reliance industries limited and dbs bank they have collaborated to promote cbg plants across india what is the cbg plant cbg stands for compressed biogas plants it stands for compressed biogas plants so reliance industries limited and dbs bank they collaborated to promote the compressed biogas plants across india this project was initially initiated by reliance industries limited and the initiative is a part of reliance industries limited's net zero emission roadmap because they also want to cut down the carbon emission right they have their goals too so for that reason they are promoting this compressed biogas plants across india right next thing remember here reliance industries limited they have planned to set up 100 compressed biogas plants in the coming next five years and the focus of reliance industries limited is on converting almost 5.5 million tons per annum of agriculture residue and organic waste into compressed gas or compressed biogas right next here you can see the initiative contributes to india's net zero goals reducing co2 that is carbon dioxide emission by nearly 2 million tons annually if we talk about reliance industries limited who is the chairman and managing director mukesh ambani headquarter mumbai maharashtra if we talk about dbs bank who is the managing director and chief executive officer here surojit shom and where is the headquarter it is in mumbai maharashtra next is award and recognition music direct a uh, music conductor daniel berenbaum and peace activist ali abu awad honored with the indira gandhi prize for peace 2023 as you can see both of them daniel berenbaum and peace activist abu awad ali abu awad they have been recently honored with the indira gandhi peace prize right take a note of this both of them you can see them in the pictures and it was for their efforts toward a non-violent resolution of the israel palestinian conflict we know that israel and palestinian people are in war right now 
right they use mu instruments of music and people's action to promote meaningful political and humanitarian dialogue they brought together the youth and the people of israel and arab world for a peaceful resolution on the ongoing conflict in the middle east and for this they were awarded with this award that is indira gandhi peace prize award right take a note of it next next is appointments and resignation india's first women candidate uma shekhar elected to the governing council of unitroid what is this unitroid it is your international institute for the unification of private law and during their 82nd session right here india's first women candidate uma shekhar has been elected to the governing council of unitroid correct it was during 82nd session and she won and she had 45 votes out of 59 votes in the initial round of the election elections were held where in rome italy right the elections constitute uh, constitu uh, consisted of 32 contestants from different countries and uma shekhar she is an additional secretary and the legal advisor in the ministry of external affairs in india right this unitroid remember this aims to study and develop uniform laws to modernize harmonize and coordinate private and commercial laws among the states and state groups next next is cci they have approved the acquisition of 100% shareholding in costania by capripack i repeat cci they have approved the acquisition of the control over constania constantia flexibles holdings right by capripack that is a capripack bidco gmbh correct so costania will be costantia will be acquired by capripack now 100% acquisition will be there who is the acquirer capripack who will be acquired constantania right next next is india's fastest solar electric boat barakuda launched in kerala i repeat india's first solar electric boat that is barakuda it was launched at the navghati panwali yard in alappuzha kerala the vessel was jointly developed by mdl that is madgaon dock ship builders limited and navalt solar and electric boats private limited this barakuda has twin 50 kilowatt electric motors and the vessel can be deployed in the rough seas as a work boat to ferry up to 12 passengers and cargo the vessel is of 14 meter long and 4.54 meter wide this can travel at a top speed of 12.5 knots that is 23 km per hour and has a range of 7 hours on a single charge so coming back remember india's fastest solar electric boat that is barakuda name you have to remember this is important and where was this launch this was launched in the state of kerala next next remember one more thing about china right china starts up world's first fourth generation nuclear reactor china they have started the world's first fourth generation nuclear reactor right this is the world's first fourth generation nuclear reactor and remember china has a goal to produce 10% of electricity from nuclear by 2035 and by 18% of electricity by nuclear by 2060 next related to sports and this is important leander pace and vijay amritraj as you can see them in the picture they became the first indians to be inducted into the international tennis hall of fame important take a note i repeat leander pace and vijay amritraj both of them they have been recently became the first indians to be inducted into the international tennis hall of fame right mark this both of them as you can see them in the picture right and with this india became the 28th nation represented in the hall of fame next bcci they have retired the ms dhoni's iconic jersey number 7 we know that ms dhoni the former captain of indian cricket team he used to wear seven number jersey and now recently bcci has announced the retirement of the former indian cricketer mahendra singh dhoni's iconic jersey number 7 to honor his achievement in the indian cricket here ms dhoni he became the second indian to be given this honor after sachin tendulkar whose jersey number was 10 and it was retired in 2017 and now ms dhoni's jersey number 7 has been retired correct this will mean that no other indian cricketer can have a jersey number 7 now and earlier it was 10 also so both of these jersey numbers are now reserved 7 is for ms dhoni and 10 is for sachin tendulkar and no other further in future if any indian cricketer wants to have these number they cannot have these 
numbers right if we talk about uh, ms dhoni he was honored with padma shri in 2009 padma bhushan in 2018 right and he was awarded with major dhyanchand khel ratan award in 2007 next next is novak djokovic and aryan sablanka as you can see them in the picture they have won the itf world champion award 2023 i repeat novak djokovic who is from serbia and has been named the men's international tennis federation world champion for the eighth time in his career and aryana sablanka a belarusian player has been named as the women's itf world champion for the first time for her consistent performance in the season 2023 so mark this both are important itf that is international tennis federation where is the headquarter for this it is in london uk right so friends these were your important current affairs for the day now let's go for a quick one liner revision ministry of environment forest and climate change they have launched indian forest and wood certification scheme niti aayog ifpri they signed a statement of intent to strengthen the policy framework for agriculture transformation and the infrastructure development then india's women voters to surpass male voters from 2029 general election as per the sbi's erd report logistics cost in india a report on the logistics cost in india assessment and long term framework released by dpiit here who's fifth global status report on road safety was released and global road traffic deaths dropped by 5% and remember this report by who states that that globally we are seeing a decrease in the deaths by traffic uh, or road accidents but in india we are seeing an increase in the deaths by road accidents then lic card idfc first bank and mastercard they collaborated to launch a co-branded credit card cash free payment launch india's first self hosted payment orchestration platform reliance industries limited and dbs bank they collaborated to promote compressed biogas plants across india music conductor daniel berenmoim and peace activist ali abu awad honored with the indira gandhi peace prize 2023 India's first women candidate Uma Shekhar was elected to the governing council of Unidroid. CCI approved the acquisition of 100% shareholding in Constantinia by Caprec. So Constantinia will be acquired by Capricac. Capricac. Then India's fastest solar electric boat that is Barracuda was launched in Kerala. China they have launched uncrewed reusable spacecraft into the orbit and China has started up the world's first fourth generation nuclear reactor. then leander pace and vijay amritraj they became the first indians to be inducted into the international tennis hall of fame bcci has retired ms dhoni's iconic jersey number 7 earlier it was jersey number 10 that was retired for sachin tendulkar then novak djokovic and aryana sablanka for men and women itf world champion 2023 so these were your important current affairs for the day friends now let's move to some revision current affairs for learning Hello everyone so in this video we will be discussing important current affairs for 15th of December the session will be quite interesting so do pay attention till the end let's start the first is in mercer's quality of living city ranking 2023 which indian city has topped this ranking so we are talking about mercer's quality of living city ranking in this remember india's hyderabad city and hyderabad is the capital of telangana right they have this city has secured the top position for the sixth time and they have emerged as the best indian city for the sixth time and here we are talking about indian cities but if we talk about globally right that in this particular mercer's quality of living city ranking which city has topped the list it was topped by vienna vienna austria correct Vienna Australia secured the first position globally that is the best city that is offering the best or highest quality of life in the world and in India it is Hyderabad next is in which city first urban flood mitigation project was recently approved so government of india they have approved the first urban flood mitigation project that is worth 561.29 crore rupees Now the question asked is in which city this first urban flood mitigation project was approved? It was approved in Chennai, right? So this is your you can see because we know that recently cyclone was there in Chennai, and what was the name of that cyclone? It is Michuang. This is the name of the cyclone that is in uh, Chennai right now, 
This name Michuang to this cyclone was given by which country? It was given by Myanmar. This is also important question, friends. Right? Then next thing, remember, it is government of India. They have approved this first urban flood mitigation project cost worth 561.29 crore rupees for the integrated urban flood management activities for Chennai Basin project. This comes under the National Disaster Mitigation Fund that will also include central assistance of 500 crore rupees. Right? And government of India has directed the Ministry of Home Affairs for the same, to provide the second installment of the same. Which organization injected 50 million euro? I repeat, which organization injected 250 million dollar, not 50, 250 million dollar to boost India's industrial corridor? We know that India is uh, on global level making India or making in India. This is one of the initiative where India is promoting this initiative and we, in India also and globally we are promoting that we want to become the factory of the world similar to that of China, right? We want to increase our manufacturing. We want to increase our industrial sector so that we can export more to different parts of the world. For the same reason to enhance the development of India's industrial corridor, it was Asian Development Bank, right? They have recently approved or injected $250 million loan to boost the India's industrial corridor, right? Mark this. Then when remember this funding program, this will support the multimodal logistic program under PM Gati Shakti, right? And what is PM Gati Shakti? It is your master plan for multimodal collectivity. Also, apart from this, this is your first investment. Second investment, remember, they invested $200 million and it is to improve the sanitation facilities in, in India. Improve the sanitation and solid waste management facilities in India. Also, we know that India's mission is Swachh Bharat Mission, that is Urban 2.0 to make cities garbage free by 2026. This is the target of the government of India. So this is also important. Under this only, this $200 million will be injected. Next, PM Modi inaugurated the first Indian art architecture, architecture and design biennial 2023 at Dash location. I repeat, PM Modi inaugurated first Indian art architecture and design biennial 2023 where they, he inaugurated this at Red Fort. Now, where is Red Fort? Red Fort is located in New Delhi. Right. This is being organized by the Ministry of Cultural Affairs. This will be from 9 to 15th of December at Red Fort in New Delhi. This event will bring together various artists, designers and architectures from India to showcase their art and innovation. Moving on. Next, which bank has recently signed 70 million euro loan with Germany's KFW for solar photovoltaic projects? It is State Bank of India, SBI. SBI, they recently signed a 70 million euro loan with Germany's KFW for solar photovoltaic project. And this agreement basically was signed in IFSC, GIF city that is in Gandhinagar, Gujarat. And remember, this is in line with India's commitment that was made at COP28. Okay, COP28, where was this held? This was held in UAE in Dubai. Right? And as this solar photovoltaic project here, we will be developing solar panels. This company that is your Germany's KFW, they will be developing solar panels for India. And this will help to reduce the carbon emissions as we will be generating electricity through solar energy. So the right option here becomes SBI. If we talk about SBI, Dinesh Kumar Khara is the chairperson, Mumbai Maharashtra headquarter, and it was established in 1950. If we talk about KFW from Germany, here Chief Executive Officer will be Stefan Wintels. Headquarter is in Frankfurt, Germany and it was in 1948 that this was established. Next, next is which bank has emerged as the top performer of 2023 CAFI award for climate reporting by IFC. I repeat, IFC, that is your International Finance Corporation. This is a member of World Bank Group and they have recognized which bank, that is your Federal Bank, right? They are the top performer of the 2023 CAFI Awards. What is CAFI? Climate Assessment for Financial Institutions Award for Climate 
reporting so federal bank has emerged as the top performer of the 2023 cafi award for climate reporting correct and remember federal bank emerged as the standout performer by securing two position on the global stage and fourth recognition in the south asian region right mark this then apart from this if i ask you or in this institute some institutions were also there other part from this that is their most transactions reported it was by equity bank they are the foreign bank equity bank is of kenya just remember this also this is an apart from this knowledge correct so coming back which bank emerged as the top performer of 2023 cafi and what is cafi climate assessment for financial institutions award for climate reporting by ifc it is your federal bank right next if we talk about federal bank who is the chief executive officer sham shrinivasan headquarters in aluwa kerala and it was in 1931 that this was established next is which edition which edition of hornbill festival concluded in nagaland so it was the 24th edition of the hornbill festival this hornbill festival is also known as festival of festivals right this was this festival is annually held from 1st to 10th of december it is held in nagaland right and it is to encourage the inter tribal interaction and to preserve and protect their richness of heritage or richness of their culture so this is from 1st to 10th of december also known as festivals of festival that is hornbill festival that was held in nagaland and this was the 24th edition of this festival right then this was held in the naga heritage village of kisama that is located 12 kilometers from kohima so what is the name of the village where this was held that is naga heritage village of kisama correct mark this then apart from this remember if i ask you who is the chief minister of nagaland la ganeshan uh, sorry governor is la ganeshan and chief minister is nephew rio right and he was the host of the festival here moving on here you can see 24th edition of hornbill festival concluded in nagaland it was from 1st to 10th of december and it is to encourage the tribal interaction inter tribal interaction and preserve their community and culture of the naga heritage next According to RBI's fifth bi-monthly monetary policy, India will be growing by what GDP in 2024? So, according to this fifth bi-monthly monetary policy, India will be growing by how much percent? India will be growing by seven percent, right? In 2024, let me write here seven percent in fiscal year 24, right? In this also, if we look at the quarter three. quarter 3 of fiscal year 24 india was growing at 6.5% at quarter 4 india will be growing by 6% right then if we talk about the quarter 1 of fiscal year 25 that is from april to june the projected gdp is 6.75% for second quarter of fiscal year 25 it the gdp is projected at 6.5% for third quarter of fiscal year 25 the gdp is projected at 6.4% right then if we talk about cpi data that is related to your inflation right it is projected that cpi will be 5.4% in fiscal year 24 correct and for the third quarter if we look at for the third quarter of fiscal year 24 gdp will be uh, inflation will be at 5.6% and for the fourth quarter for the same year it will be 5.2% right so do take a note of this next is homework section first which country has recently surpassed afghanistan to become the world's largest producer of opium in 2023 according to un odc give me the full form also of this un odc next what is the full form of PABS mentioned in the draft pandemic treaty discussions and what is the use of it why we are discussing about it third 
Captain Fatima Wasim created history by becoming the first women medical officer to be deployed at Daesh location. Fourth, ICT or International Cooperation and Education on Technology is administered by which ministry? Fifth, what is the trend of cyber crimes and economic offenses in 2022 as compared to 2021? So these are your five homework question friends and I want to see maximum participation from all the students watching this video. Do like the video and comment below and let us know what are your views for the same. If you like this, I want to see multiple comments from all the students watching this video that will motivate me to make better content for you in the long run. That's all for the day friends. I hope you enjoyed the session and you can follow us on the YouTube channel as well as apart from YouTube channel, you can go and follow us at Affairs Cloud Telegram channel. And if you have any queries related to the content or the of courses offered to you or the payment which you did on the application, you can contact us on the number provided that is 7677333862. Apart from this friends, you can follow us on the Facebook as well as on Instagram handle that is affairs cloud underscore official. In the end friends, if you use a code that is Vikas10, you will be getting an additional extra 10% discount by using this code Vikas10. Also, if you have any problem regarding the course purchase, any problem regarding to our application, you can contact us on the mobile number that is 9677333862. And if you want to mail us, you can also mail us on support at the rate of affairscloud.com. And I assure you that our representative from us will be contacting you soon and resolving your issue.